team. Welcome back, I'm Matt. And I've got a minor confession about this video. So I thought I filmed a bunch more footage than I actually did, and I went to start editing and discovered this wasn't quite the case. So I'm sorry for the lack of video footage, but there's still a heap in here, I promise. Sit back, relax, and enjoy some stills before we get into the meat of it. Slide thanks, mate. So this is a mate's track car. He and his dad use it for community organized time trial street sprint events. The legal type, not the other type. It's an E36 BMW with an LS1 shoehorned under the bonnet. It's a nice big V8 for a small car. It has heaps of horrible looking vents all over it to keep that big engine cool. During a recent event, someone forgot to do the bonnet pins up and when the car hit third gear, it flipped up and smashed the windscreen. And this was the end result. They still managed to come home with second place in that event but are now in need of some replacement parts. I volunteered to make a race spec part for them and this is that story. Back to those vents. I needed a decent outflow area to keep the engine cool, so I worked out what the current area was, added a little bit more to it for a safety factor, and then made them higher so we didn't need as many of them and arranged them a bit more nicely. I had to make a whole bunch of vents so I 3D printed them. I needed to smooth them for moulding and I really didn't want to sand or file them down, so I turned to the internet and stumbled upon acetone vapour smoothing. To get these vents smooth, I'm going to try a little bit of uh, acetone vapour smoothing or vapour polishing, whatever you want to call it. I've never given this a go before, so I've gone out and I've picked up a container. Um, it's uh, polypropylene, according to the wisdom of the internet, she's good to go. Uh, and it won't melt under acetone. I've also picked up a cooking rack or a cake rack. Uh, it's a sacrifice to see one of these without a cake on it, um, but it's a sacrifice I'm going to make. So first up, I'm just going to cut it down to size so that the rack fits inside there and can support the part outside of the acetone. This is a scientifically calibrated quantity of acetone. Um, yeah, now I guess we just uh, wait and check on it every 15 minutes or so. That vapor smoothing looks pretty good. There's 23 parts there, there's another three sitting over on the side, uh, just airing out at the moment and rehardening. You gotta be really careful when you first pull them out of the vapor bath. Uh, they are a bit soft and you can leave fingerprints in them and they're pretty easy to damage. But other than being careful when you pull them out and just monitoring them the whole time, it's a pretty easy process. And it works out quite nicely. Very shiny, should be good to release off. All right, vent time. So you got all the vent points you can see in the yellow masking tape, here and here and here. And also the really dodgy cut lines around it, my bad. Um, so what we're going to do is hot glue gun down the vents. We're just going to put some glue on here, smack the vents on, and then go from there. because every man needs a hot pink glue gun in his life. All the vents are now in place. Now we're gonna fillet all the edges around all the vents with a bit of wax, so that none of the gel coat gets stuck in there when making the mold. When working with filleting wax, make sure you get it nice and soft by working it, so that you get it into all the spots that you need it to. Put an excessive amount in, because you can wipe it off later. Since you've been gone, I've finished off installing all the vents. I've put skirting around the whole edge of the bonnet. I've filleted, waxed everything, and I've sprayed the whole plug down with PVA. My neighbours have kept me up all night. My sister's been dropped at the airport. But right now, 
with Jakarta. As we apply our gel coat, we want to be relatively liberal with it. We want to apply in one direction initially. That's coat one done, so now we're committed to see this whole thing through. Um, it's not too bad, it's not as even as I'd like, it's not perfect, it's not a spray gun finish. Um, so I think I'm going to have to learn how to spray and I'm going to have to set up an area so that I can spray in future. After the first layer, everything went bad. I couldn't get the glass mat to conform to the vents, so I had to grind out the top of the glass after it cured, and then make a putty to go over it, and turn the whole vent area into a big plateau. This was much easier to glass over. Welcome back, with the model cured, it's time to demold. I've got to remove all these flanges. I don't want to take this uh, bonnet out of the actual mold yet, because I have to make another couple of cuts into the uh, perimeter to locate some key features later on. But for now, let's just start taking all these bits off. So I've reinstalled my alignment pins so I can pick up the critical points. The critical points of this bonnet in this case are the hinge at the back here, with a point here with a pin in it, and then another hole here, and then the gas strut located here, again with a pin in here, and no pin in this one. I'm then gonna put a template um, across these two pins and then mark out and draw some locations in the flange of the mould so that I can relocate and identify where those holes are at a later date. That's so I can put in a foam core that brings up the bonnet to this thickness here and then has an appropriate recess, as in this demo piece, um, to allow an M6 nut to go through um, with a gap down the centre here. Please ignore the really bad stuff on the sides. So here's my template. Um, it's designed to be able to go on the outside of the bonnet and these lugs pick up the outside on both sides. And then also these two holes that you can see here are going to be on the mould flanges. So you may have noticed it before while I was demolding, uh, but you can see in a few of these vents, you can see this white stuff here. You can see it here and you can see it down here. When I was grinding away the top layer of fiberglass that didn't sit right over the vents, I actually accidentally went through um, the gel coat 
well, entirely accidentally. I don't know why you'd ever want to do that. Um, so I went through the gel coat and uh, hit the plastic below. So that there is actually just a mixture of Q cells, uh, glass microspheres, um, and resin. So I have to be careful of that. I probably should have put some gel coat in there before I put the Q cells over the top. Uh, we live and we learn. Um, this mold only needs to make you know, one or two parts, and we'll go from there. You didn't miss much here, just lots and lots of sanding. I had a few PVA runs to get out of it, and one of the corrugations from the core flute gone. I generally started with 240 grit and used 120 grit on the rough stuff. I then went up to 360 grit before wet sanding from 400 through to 1000 grit. In hindsight, I should have wet sanded from the start as it would have prevented the red dust from getting all over my workshop and then I could have ditched the respirator for a little bit more comfort. This is the finished product ready to make the part. I should have filmed some more and I promise I'll do better for you next time. Thanks for watching.